I saw this woman um, in, in panic. Um, she couldn't see where she was going, and she obviously had been burnt. Her, her hair was smoldering, her clothes had been totally burnt, her shoes were burnt. In the lobby of the Marriott, Ron comforted the badly burned woman, Jenny Ann, and together they waited for an ambulance. I knew that I had to get her out of there. I knew that you, you, you don't leave a dying person. I knew that whatever it took to get her out was what it took. And even though a few times I stood up in panic and wanted to run out of there myself, I knew that I had to take her with me. Outside, the morning rush hour was at a standstill. People were looking up at something the hotel guests couldn't see. On the 10th floor, Dennis Wooldridge, the man who was writing a novel on a terrorist attack on New York, surveyed the street below. What really got my attention was the reaction of the people on the street. Everyone was either moving away from the Trade Center or they were stopped with their mouths agape. And I, and I realized something strange is going on. I still didn't know what it was. The thing that made me a little nervous is they were looking at me, and I realized we were probably not in a very good place. As news about the disaster spread, fears for the safety of those caught up in the events was growing. At the Marriott, the phones didn't stop ringing, and Amy Ting did her best to deal with incoming calls. I was answering all the phone calls that was coming in because a lot of people were calling in saying, I need to, um, you know, transfer me to room blah, 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 transfer me to room nine, you know, something. And is everything okay? Is my husband okay? The evacuation of the Marriott was now well underway, and amongst the stream of guests leaving the hotel was Dennis Wooldridge and his father. This was the first opportunity we had to see anything that had happened, so we turned around and saw the North Tower for the first time, and it was obvious that something very serious had happened. My reaction at that point was to go back to my original conclusion that, in fact, something terrorist-related had happened. By now, holidaymaker Christine Sweeting had also made it out of the building with her daughter, but in the chaos of the evacuation, she'd lost her husband. I was so worried. I mean, I, I, I still thought my husband would appear. Yeah, I'm going to look around, he's going to be there, he's going to find us, you know. We was outside the hotel. He had to come out one door or another. Christine and her daughter joined the crowds in the confusion beneath the Twin Towers. Everyone was sort of gazing up. Somebody said, there's been a light plane going to the tower. I went, oh, my God, you know, and we looked up at it. I said to my daughter, I said, she had a camera, and I said, take a photo of it, because you're never going to see, you know, that again. We're never going to experience that again. And as she was sort of pointing it up to sort of snap the picture, at that point, the second plane come in. This is the photograph Christine's daughter took. And I'm thinking, my God, what's, what's going on here? You know, this is, what on earth has happened? This is something really bad. This is the second photograph taken by Christine's daughter immediately after the plane had crashed into the South Tower. At this moment, Ron Clifford was comforting the badly burned Jenny Ann in the hotel lobby. She said to me, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. And I said, no, you're not. We're going to help you through this. And she said, Sacred Heart of Jesus, help me. I said to her, you're, you're obviously Catholic. And she said, yes. So I said, look where we're waiting, let's say a prayer. So we said the Lord's Prayer, and as I was finishing the Lord's Prayer, there was another extreme explosion. Ron had no way of knowing that what he heard was a second plane hitting the South Tower, or that on that plane was his sister, Ruth, and her four-year-old daughter, Juliana. They were flying to Disneyland in Los Angeles for a holiday. Watching the events unfold on television in his room on the 19th floor of the Marriott, lawyer Frank Rosano remained unconcerned. His focus was on his day ahead in court. As I'm standing there watching the television, I'm saying to myself, look, 
the firemen will come into the building, they'll put out the fire. This really has nothing to do with me. Um, and I've got an appointment. I've got people to meet at 11 uh, o'clock. The thought occurred to me, I I'm just going to go about my own, uh, about my day. By now, most of the firefighters assigned to deal with the disaster were dispatched to the Twin Towers. But amongst the units sent to help evacuate the Marriott Hotel was Engine 74, with leading firefighter Jeff Johnson. We were given an assignment to search for civilians in the Marriott Hotel. My main concern was that we just stayed together. We stayed cohesive as a unit. You know, uh, in, a, in a big operation like this, it's it's critical. So th that's one of the main things I tried to stress to the guys, saying, whatever happens, we do it all together. Amy Ting had volunteered to stay to help oversee the evacuation. As they were led out of a side entrance on the street, guests were warned not to look up. You, you hear thud, thud, thud sound, and you just thought it was just the buildings, which, you know, parts of the building was falling. Um, but, you know, it was not. When we looked out, cars was on fire and people were jumping down. And, you know, you, you see a glimpse of it, but you try not to look at it. In the lobby of the Marriott, Ron Clifford realized that to get the badly burned Jenny Ann to an ambulance, they would have to leave the safety of the building. I knew that we had to get out of the building, so I asked Jenny Ann if she could stand up. I shouted to get somebody to help us, um, and somebody threw me a tablecloth that I wrapped around her. And then we headed towards, towards the lobby door. A photographer captured the moment as Ron, with his yellow tie, helped Jenny Ann across the street, avoiding the falling debris. I said to Jenny Ann, Jenny Ann, can you run? And she said, I'll try. And so the, the group of us just huddled together and, and ran across the street to the highway. Amidst the growing chaos on the streets, Ron and his team of helpers safely delivered Jenny Ann to a waiting ambulance. Having accomplished his mission, Ron began his journey home to his family. Meanwhile, on the top floor of the Marriott, a group of firefighters were searching the deserted gym area of the hotel to check nobody was still left inside. One of them was Jeff Johnson. We felt relatively safe because where we were, there was no, we didn't see any visible fire at that point. Tower one and tower two was the problem, which was out there. Uh, we were kind of like in an adjacent building and we never, no one in their wildest dreams ever thought that the buildings were going to collapse. With the Twin Towers burning out of control immediately above the Marriott, almost all the guests had evacuated the hotel. Only then did Frank Rosano finally decide to leave his room on the 19th floor. I said to myself, you know, I gotta pack all this stuff up and get it out of here. Uh, and find, I'll probably have to find another hotel room uh, tonight. And that's what I did. I began packing the stuff up in boxes and litigation bags. And when I had gotten all of the stuff packed, um, I stood there thinking to myself, I wonder if I can get a bellman to come up and get me. Suddenly, one of the firefighters came running through the revolving doors. He, he yelled, run, the building's coming down. We didn't run two steps because it, the building came down so quick, the impact um, blew us from the middle of the lobby to the end of the lobby. Within that split two seconds, it was the longest two seconds ever, and you can't even yell because the soot was into your mouth, into your nose. You can't breathe. Your heart stopped. Still in his suite on the 19th floor, lawyer Frank Rosano saw a curtain of